Crying is good for you. And welcome to this video that's a case for crying. So if you have problems with allowing yourself to cry, if you somehow never cry, uh, or if you feel wrong about it or ashamed, this video is for you. Personally, I cry almost every day. <laughs> and this may sound weird to a lot of people, but why would crying be so different from, for example, laughing? We all laugh every day, but somehow crying has a very negative stigma in today's society. Why is it so different from expressing an emotion like joy? Why wouldn't we allow ourselves to equally express sadness or frustration? Or even positive emotions that can make us cry, like crying because of love. The negative stigma in this society around crying has to do with a idea that crying is for weak people losers, people who don't, um, you know, are, who aren't able to put themselves together, pull themselves together. Um, and so crying is associated with like a negative self-image. Like if you cry, you might think of yourself as doing something wrong and also being vulnerable and thus, you know, being able to be um, judged for crying by others. And most of us learn that, that very early on, maybe from your parents, maybe your parents have taught you that you shouldn't cry because that's, you know, bothering them or, or maybe they feel you're exaggerating. Um, or maybe in school where you felt unsafe for very valid reasons when you cried because that's something to be bullied for by other kids. So think for yourself for a moment right now, reflect on this. Why don't you allow yourself to cry? Or why do you feel bad about crying? And let's address those most common reasons why we not allow ourselves to cry. So first of all, there's the idea that we're exaggerating. So we're making a big problem out of nothing. And that's usually an idea that has come from the outside world that has been imposed upon us by others who did not understand our reason for crying. They might have thought that they were understanding our reason for crying, but actually they didn't, because if they truly did, they would have been crying too. You see, there's never crying for no reason at all. There's always something within us that makes us cry. We're not lunatics. There's always a valid reason for crying, even if you are not consciously aware of that reason. There's something unresolved inside you that's hurting. And that's why you're crying. Maybe you're very stressed. Maybe you're very sad. Maybe you're grieving something. And a lot of times there is a superficial reason for crying. Not superficial in like a bad way. I mean like just a reason that's on the surface of our awareness. Like maybe something small happens. Like you are unable to catch your train and you like, you know, you see your train uh, driving into the distance and you're just like, oh, I miss that. And you start, you want to start crying. And maybe you think to yourself, like, I'm exaggerating. I shouldn't be crying for like missing a freaking train. Right. But underneath that, there's something like maybe you've been stressed for a long period of time already. 
there might be all kinds of things underneath it. So please don't ever call yourself um, exaggerating. There's always a valid reason for crying. So another common reason not to allow ourselves to cry is that vulnerability part. Yes, it is scary to cry when there are other people around us or even when there are other people around us inside our own minds. Like we're thinking, what would this person be thinking about that? We're always kind of watching ourselves through the eyes of others. So there are always these potential others and what would they be thinking of us when they see us crying and how would they react to that? And maybe they would judge you. Maybe they will even bully you. And I wouldn't, although this is a video that's a case for crying and I want to encourage you to allow yourself to cry, I'm not encouraging you to cry in just any situation from now on, because that might be too far out of your comfort zone. You don't have to, have, you don't have to push yourself into the panic zone and make yourself cry in front of everyone at your office or if that sounds super scary to you. But I would encourage you to allow yourself a little more often to cry in the presence of people and maybe just starting with a very safe feeling friend or like a partner or a family member whom you trust a lot. See how they react. And you will see that a lot of times it strengthens your connection with people when they get to see your vulnerable side. And a lot of people will react very sweetly. And if they don't, that's a red flag. That means that something in that relationship is wrong. And maybe it's just them being unable to cry themselves and having an unresolved issue around <laughs> the topic of crying. And you can just forgive that and just kind of, you know, find a way to um, either ask them how to go about you crying in their presence or just make a mental note that you don't want to cry in their presence anymore as most of us are so able to <laughs> repress our crying um, but in many cases you will see that you will receive it in a nice way and so you will actually be able to strengthen your connections through showing that vulnerability and that will allow you to be so much more relaxed. And paradoxically, feel less vulnerable as you feel more safe in the presence of the people that you can cry with. So then there is this uh, last common reason for not allowing yourself to cry that I would like to address, which is judging yourself as weak for crying. Oh, actually, just the fourth reason is, jump is jumping into my mind, so I'll address that other, uh, later. Um, but yeah, the, the idea that you're weak for crying is absolutely, you know... Um, wrong because allowing yourself to cry actually takes a lot of courage we live in a society where crying is stigmatized in a very negative way so allowing yourself to cry is a courageous act that's simple looking into your shadows is not necessarily easy so if you allow yourself to cry, be proud of it. You are strong for it. Fourth reason I would like to address for not crying is the idea that we would be um, a burden to other people if we do so.
And this is an understandable idea because most people don't know how to go about people around them crying as they're so not used to it. And so they might feel like, oh my God, how do I deal with this? This person is crying in my presence. Like, should I soothe them? Should I like, solve their problem for them? And that's what most people would like to do, solve your problem for you. But usually it's not a problem that's solved that easily. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be crying. You would just be solving your problem. So usually it's more like a situation where you are in this muddiness and there's just nothing to do for the other person than to kind of be there for you, like hold the space. And that's actually a very enjoyable task if you know how to do it. Holding the space for someone and just being a supporting presence. But most people don't know how to do about that and they go and be very uneasy about someone crying in their presence. Or they might even feel like, oh my God, you're complaining and, you know, don't be negative around me because I will now absorb your negativity. Yeah, there are people who have issues with other people crying. And that might give you the feeling as if you're a burden when you cry or share your heaviness. An important thing to realize is that you have that heaviness inside you already. It has been in your energy field already. So whether you express it or not, it was there. And so you're sharing that already, even if you're not expressing it by crying. And the sensitive people amongst us might know what I'm talking about when I say that you can feel that heaviness inside someone also when they're not expressing it by crying. And also that when someone is expressing it by crying it actually starts to feel lighter because at least it's given space and that space does transform the negativity So if you are in an environment with a lot of people who cannot appreciate you sharing that heaviness and crying, maybe it's a good idea to see which people are in for seeing that part of you and who are not and spend more time with the people who are appreciative of you expressing your emotions. And be careful with just throwing away friendships like that because there might be a lot of people of whom you're thinking that you will be a burden to them. Well, actually, they won't feel like that. So do verbally check in with them. Do they mind you expressing your emotions, your sadness, your frustration? Do they mind you crying? And you might be surprised that they aren't feeling burdened by that at all. And some people might just need a few instructions about how to, how to support you when you're feeling sad and crying. So it might be helpful to ask someone if they would just, you know, be there for you, like not, not solving your problem or not feeling uneasy, just um, just be comfortable while you're crying. They don't need to solve your problem for you. Just maybe putting a hand on your back is more than enough. All right, a last note on crying to uh, finally encourage you to cry more in your life is that really it's, um, it's so beautiful to allow yourself the fullness of your emotional spectrum and to allow yourself crying and it will actually release a lot out of you. So instead of, instead of repressing yourself or denying your sadness, which is basically really denying a part of you, repressing a part of you, instead of all of that, you could also embrace all of that, embrace yourself. And the brain chemistry 
of crying is actually that it reduces stress and it increases a good mood. <laughs> so, I wish you happy cryings. <laughs> And um, yeah, just keep in mind that even on a on a kind of on a kind of broader level, you can be happy while you're crying. It's not like the end of the world. It's not like you have to dive into like a deepness that you will never get out of, that you will never come back out of. You can be crying and sad and kind of happy for experiencing that fullness of you at the same time. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching and see you next time. If you liked the video, you can let me know by giving it a like. If you want to not miss out on my new videos, you can subscribe to my channel. <laughs>